Today on Lunch Break, disturbing new details in the allegations against Matt Lauer. We'll tell you what a new book reveals. Also, it's flu season. Dr. Mythbuster is here. He'll help us separate flu fact from flu fiction. And Russ Mitchell is taking us to lunch. Russ and I take a seat at his favorite lunch spot. It's your lunch break with Jay Crawford. It is lunchtime again, and we welcome you to our lunch table. Come on in. Lunch break is the name of the show. I'm yeah. Jay Crawford, and thrilled today to be joined by first-time host. This is only day three of the show. I am Holly Strano. I don't know what to do with myself. Well, first of all, I mean, I want to point out the mug. Yeah, this is a new right? addition to today's show. So this is when you know you've really made it in television. And, and the thing I thought about, you know, was what I know you don't drink coffee, so I in, don't. In no. between, with all my time I went to the store and I thought what would Jade put in the the drinks I brought you, I brought you some choices all right you have choice one yeah Gatorade choice two. Oh, monster I can use that or emoji water okay I, I would probably put all three right right now there's tea in there yeah and I will say it's just a little weird drinking out of a cup with this with is my this face is on great it. the over under on how many days it takes before you draw a mustache out this is so beyond great that I actually initialed mine so that I know it's mine and nobody else will steal this in the newsroom because this is what I'm drinking from from this point I, forward I have to admit it's somewhat embarrassing but don't be embarrassed it's really cool okay well we're glad to have you we're to glad be. to have you Holly uh, we begin with a tough topic new details on allegations against former Today Show host Matt Lauer former NBC employee Brooke Nevels told her story to author Ronan Farrow this is for a, a new upcoming book here's a clip from the story that aired on the Today Show this morning in the book, Nevels alleges Lauer raped her in his hotel room at the 2014 Sochi Olympics. According to her account, she had been drinking heavily and went back to his room twice, once to retrieve her press credentials, which she says Lauer had taken as a joke, and a second time after he invited her back, because as Farrow writes, she had no reason to suspect Lauer would be anything but friendly based on prior experience. Once she was in his hotel room, Nevels alleges Lauer pushed her against the door and kissed her before pushing her onto the bed. Back in New York, according to Variety, Nevels told Pharaoh she had more sexual encounters with Lauer, saying she was terrified about the control he had over her career. This is shocking mm -hmm. and appalling, and um, I honestly don't even know what to say mm -hmm. about it. I want to say that we, um, I know it wasn't easy for our colleague, Brooke, to come mm -hmm. forward then. It's not easy now. Mm -hmm. And we support her and any women who have come forward with claims. It's like you feel like you've known someone for, for, for 12 years, and I don't know if you guys have ever felt like that. You know someone, you know them, you feel like you know them inside and out, and then all of a sudden, like, a door opens up, and it's a part of them you didn't know. And we don't know all the facts in all of this, but there are not allegations of an affair, there are allegations of a crime. And um, I think that's shocking to all of us here who've sat with Matt for many, many years. Variety broke the story after getting an advanced copy of the soon to be released book. Nevels was working for Meredith Vieira at right. the 2014 Winter Olympics at the time of the alleged assault, Nevels told Vieira about the incident three years later in 2017. Meredith then urged her to go to Human Resources, which she did, and very shortly after going to Human Resources, Lauer was fired. So, you know, Matt Lauer's, of course, responding through a letter released by his lawyers to Variety and saying, quote, in a new book, it is alleged that an extramarital but consensual sexual encounter I have previously admitted having was in fact an assault. It is categorically false, ignores the facts, and defies common sense. The letter goes on saying, quote, the story Brooke tells is filled with false details intended only to create the impression this was an abusive encounter. Nothing could be further from the truth. There was absolutely nothing aggressive about that encounter. NBC did reach out to Brooke Neville. But so far, she has not commented on this. And, uh, you know, I think they kind of summed it up in a nutshell. It's like you're, like, shocked and you hear this stuff and it just kind of crushes you because this man was in your living rooms for years and years and years. It's hard. He was America. America woke up to him. Yeah, I met the guy. For many years. Yeah. You know? So we'll continue to follow the details of this story. 
So the NFL, Holly, is actually kind of in a little bit of a controversy here because of the events of a game last weekend. Demario Davis plays for the New Orleans Saints, wore a headband during the game. You can see it here. He's posing with his family mm -hmm. and says, man of God. Well, the NFL has pretty strict rules against personal messages on your uniform. Very strict uniform code. So they find him $7,000. Kids at a Catholic school in nearby Louisiana actually, in support of Davis, made their own headbands. They say, child of God, and they pose for pictures to show DeMario that they are with him. DeMario appealed the fine. He won his appeal. So the NFL actually did a very rare reversal here. Yeah. He still says he's going to donate the $7,000 to a charity of his choice. Well, that's nice. What, what do you make of the NFL's all right. rule? Well, first of no all, messages on, on your uniform. NFL versus school. Right. I mean, it's, that's a very big difference. But I do think, I mean, you're messing with self-expression mm -hmm. to a degree. You are. And I also feel that, I mean, you know, w those of you that are raising your children in Christian, Catholic, whatever it be, schools, I mean... Is this really a bad thing that they're, yeah, you know, that they're praying or that they're saying a prayer before a game? I mean, sure. my daughter plays CYO sports, and we do a before prayer and a after prayer, and yeah. pray for their safety and things like that. So I, I don't know that I have a problem with this. Once upon a time, Jim McMahon had a little beef with Commissioner then Pete Commissioner Pete Rozelle, and he wore this headband in a game. He was fined five thousand dollars. Interestingly, the league kind of came up with this rule after that. And I didn't get it at the time because I was young and I just thought, you know, let the, let the people do this. But then when it was as I grew up and I realized how controversial these things can be, somebody has to be the gatekeeper mm. and, and be the censor for what gets in and what gets out. Right. Then there's discussion and debate over, well, why didn't this message get in? Yeah. So to, to avoid those problems, across the board, no messages. Um, all right, next up. As you're watching this, you probably know in your mind if you can type faster on a keyboard or on your smartphone. Right. I thought for sure I could type faster on my keyboard. Here's uh, something that's interesting. There is a new study out. This study has been going on for years. They studied 37,000 people from 160 countries to see which one you can type faster on. And they basically found that on your smartphone, you can type 70% as fast as you can on a keyboard. I believe it. That sounds about right. So we decided we were going to have a little challenge. So Stephanie Haney, our digital anchor, and Holly and myself, we're going to put it to the test. Who could complete the same sentence the fastest? And here's the results. Take a look. Three, two, one. Capitalization count. Lunch break with Jay Crawford is my new favorite show. I win. Done. No. Yes. I was first. And I spelled break wrong. I did. My you didn't says, spell, anything. spell anything. Lunch break. It was really close. I think we need to go to the tape. Because I'm a child of 2019. Uh -huh. Photo finish. Man. It's right. I can't see because of the lights. I even I got, got your name because you're that big of a deal. My phone just knows to capitalize J. Crawford. That's true. <laughs> she won. And she I'm, won, but you cheated. You you just talked no, to No, I didn't, Jay. What did that say? No, I didn't, Jen. <laughs> she uh, talked into her microphone. So she, I was blinded. She cheated because she did the talk to text. And but really, I, it was kind of a, a, a test to see which one is the fastest way. And you did, you won fair and square. Yeah. You I'm a voice texter, square. I will say. I am. It's kind of the typing of the 2019. Yeah, I'm so 1990 on this. <laughs> I'm right here. Right you, here. You just go ahead and be right there. It's but you cute. know what? I have a lot of mistakes. I do. But so do you, because I've seen some of the things oh, that the talks to text right. can translate to. It's not even close. It's not good either. And it's hilarious. <laughs> I'm really happy and thankful that I pre-read. The proofread is very important when you're talk texting. It is clutch. Yeah. It is definitely clutch. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, more lunch break right after this. I've had a lot of those. I meant to say donuts. Next on the menu, Les Mitchell shows Jay his favorite oh, Cleveland restaurant.
gentlemen, welcome back home from Sandusky, Ohio, WKYC Zone, Jay Crawford. Uh, I told you you're such a big deal. That's pretty cool because and he's my he's my dude. When I go to Cavs games, yeah. if I'm not already in the mood when I get there, right. I am immediately hey, in the mood. Cheers when with I your Jay Face Cups. <laughs> okay, That's okay. great. And you know what? <laughs> Although he doesn't know what Facebook is yet, be sure to chime in on our Facebook Wait, and YouTube pages. I with know what God's Facebook questions. is. <laughs> Let us know what you're having for lunch. All, because the, all the kids are doing it. I, if it's up to me, we're going to get a recipe swap going on this show. We all love some recipes. That's fine with me. Uh, also, speaking of uh, the Facebook, you can. we want you to send us your lunch <laughs> restaurant suggestions for Friday because every Friday yeah. we're going to have a catered lunch on the show mm -hmm. and we want you to tell us where we should go for our lunch. Because so make the suggestions good. Yeah, you all know those Please. Like, perfect like corner spots, the yes. gems that nobody else knows about yes, but you. Yes, absolutely. And you, my friend, have been checking out some really great spots. I have. Yeah, including yeah. Russ Mitchell's favorite lunch spot. Yeah, this was pretty cool. Okay. Russ and I having lunch. Jay Crawford, how, how you doing, are you? Russ? Good to see you, man. Very good to see you. Welcome to Lee Wah. The good dim sum, good Chinese food. We'll have a good time. How you what, been? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. What I'm do good. we recommend? Here's the cart right here. You mind if I, <laughs> mind if I order a couple, <laughs> a couple things? Absolutely. Do you have some um, shumai today? Uh huh. And I think I saw some hakao there. Okay. Pork dumplings. You got some shrimp dumplings. Very good. Um, they have chicken feet too. Do you want chicken feet? Sure. You, you're going to be missed by yourself, Jay. If you like that, then no. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm good. I just want to know how adventurous you were. If you like spicy, this is uh, some spicy sauce right here. I definitely like spicy. For the, yeah. for the dumplings. It's, um, but dig in. Okay, very so good. Tell me, tell me what, how, you, how you like it. So excited about starting? I can't wait. Well, it's great to have you. I've been a fan from yeah. way back. What are you most excited about about starting here? Really being home. Yeah. Um, you know, f for so many years, I've worked in all these other places lovely places, but they weren't home. This was the first move I've ever made where I didn't have to ask myself, am I am I going to like it here? I love Clevelanders. I'm sure. their first cousin from Sandusky. <laughs> and here you are. For my dad to be able to look down, he would be, um, he would just be beside himself. That is amazing when you can have those kind of memories and how you can know your parents are looking down or your dad in your case looking down wow. and being proud of you and being, knowing that history. There's really something to that. Did you say there is. For me, when I started at, at CBS, it was in the overnight show. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't show it in St. Louis where I'm from yeah. when I first day. Oh, so your parents couldn't watch? Well, my parents, being the cool people they were, drove to Chicago, oh. which was the closest oh. place you could wow. watch it. And they both passed away now, but I, I, I think of them often when, and, yeah. they, and I'm like you, they got to see me yeah. in that way. And well, the love and the pride feeling. of a parent, there's nothing like it. Oh, no, and as parents, we get it. We, now we yeah. know it because, yeah. <laughs> what do you think so far? Wonderful. Yeah. Very, very good. Yeah. yeah. It's funny, like food, I think, is such a part of, of anyone's life when it comes By to familiarity. By the way, food so in that, Cleveland is tremendous. It's tremendous. I didn't, didn't know that when I came here, but you, you, you find these places that remind you uh, of a happy place. Sure. Uh, yeah. And, and for me, this is a... This is this is one of those places. What I've learned about Cleveland is it's an incredibly welcoming place. It feels it, right. It really does. And you know, for me, they've it's, been kind to you. I hope people have been nothing but welcoming. I'm glad to me. hear that. Oh I, yeah, it's been great, yeah. I, and I, I love it here. It continues to be a great ride. And I'm glad we got to share this. Yeah, I this am too. Great. I really yeah. am. Aww. I want to say my quick um, reaction to meeting Russ was I remembered him for watching from watching him for years on CBS. Well, yeah. He is, and I'm not making this up. He's the this nicest man I've ever met. True story. He is so pleasant. That is not fake news. Before we launched on Monday, I got a good luck. Have a yeah, great show. That's Russ. Afterwards, congratulations. I get all hours of the day. Super nice yes, guy. Yes, that's Russ. Uh, I enjoyed it. Now, I'm a little disappointed because I thought Russ and I were friends. It felt like we bonded. Yeah. But Man moment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dork myself out right now. I want you to take a look at this video. It's very good. Take a look at my good. shirt, Holly. I, I meet Russ Mitchell, and do well, you notice anything about my shirt? It's inside out. Oh, well. It's inside out. I mean, you're talking to a woman that wakes up at 1 a.m. I'm just glad that I have a shirt on. Well, Russ never told me. Now, there's a story why it's inside out. <laughs> I had a couple of shoots that day. You weren't trying to look and cool? The producer said, hey, bring a couple of different changes of clothes. Right. So I had worn that one at an earlier shoot, shoot, shoot and I, when I took it off, it was inside out. Yeah. Changed into a new shoot, Got a it. shirt for my second shoot. Yeah. <laughs> Tough for me to say. I'm following you. And when I put it back on, it was inside out and nobody told me. Well, 
you're trend setting. <laughs> I don't All right. know about that, but I wish someone would have told me. You're trend setting. I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking that Russ didn't notice. He probably didn't. Stay with us. He Tips probably for a didn't. healthier life after the break. Would you have told me? Next on the menu, Dr. Mythbuster. Don't believe everything you see online. We separate fact from fiction when it comes to the flu. Our customers love the Window Nation experience because if you're... Twelve nineteen. it's flu season, and one mom has a friendly reminder for every one of you. So Shelby Walton posted this on Facebook. You gotta look at your TV. It says, love is in the air, but so is the flu. Wash your hands and don't kiss my kids. <laughs> God bless her. I love her. the part, don't kiss my kids. Yeah, right? This post has been shared over 58,000 times on Facebook. That's good. That's pretty cool. That's good stuff. Uh, I like that. So this will be fun. The best way to make sure that you don't get the flu is to, of course, get the flu shot. Stay hydrated. Stay drink, hydrated. Drink out of your Dre Crawford cup. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but the shot comes with a lot of these misconceptions that mm -hmm. we hear about. So Dr. Frank Esper with the Cleveland Clinic is here to clear them up. Hello, doctor. How are you? Uh, it's very good to be here. So Thanks for having me. For just the TV purposes, we're going to call you Dr. Mythbuster. Okay? Okay. So you're going to come in. We're, we're going to make a statement about the flu. Yep. Or you are, actually. Yeah. And then we're going to decide if that's fact or mm -hmm. fiction. And that's before right. we get started, one of the things, I always thought that we were in flu season already. It is not but flu season. That's it, fiction. That is not fiction. It is flu vaccine season. Right okay. Now. This is the time that we, have, the vaccine is out. It is at your doctor's office. It is at the pharmacy. When does season officially it begin? Uh, generally, it's different, a little bit different every year, but usually it starts at the latter part of November okay. and runs all the way through to the beginning of April. But don't wait till then to get the, do get not, the vaccine. Do not. Okay, so, so let's let's get started. Stephanie's monitoring. Yeah, all this. you're going to monitor social media's answers as well. Yes, you all are playing along, so I've got your answers here. All so right. we okay. So this is like a big game show with yes, all of you. Yes, we have our cards. <laughs> I've never been on a game show, and now That's I get right. to be on the Jay Crawford Lunch and Game you, Show. You are on a game show now. I'm ready. Holly. Okay. All right, we're going to start with the first. Most common misconception, most common myth. Can you get the, or you can get the flu from the flu shot? Fact or fiction? That's fiction. It's fiction, that is fiction. All right, on Twitter fiction. we're saying fiction. It is fiction, that is absolutely right. It is not true. You cannot get the flu from the flu shot. The flu shot is not infectious at all. The flu shot is just, we take the virus, we chop it into pe parts and pieces, and you get a few of those parts and pieces back. So but you, not enough to get sick. Not enough to get sick. You don't get so sick. So we all got it right. Right. You, yeah. are, you are all correct. Yes. Thank you. 
<laughs> that's the buzzer that's... for when the answer is right. This is the one for when it's when it's <laughs> false. We were right. Okay. Oh, I see. Uh, that's okay. Jim. I'm I'm goofing up the game. <laughs> okay. I, I will say I'm this: sorry. it is it is a common misconception. So go ahead and get those flu shots. You cannot get the flu from the flu shot. Wonderful. Okay. Number, Next statement. Number two. All right. You should not get the flu shot if you're allergic to eggs. You should not, not get, get the, the flu shot if you're allergic to eggs. I'm going to say Jay, fiction. Did, did you just Ooh, cheat? We're saying fiction on Twitter. It is a fact. Oh. And the internet says dingy dingy. We said fiction. They say fiction. Wow, I it got that one is, wrong. It is fiction. You can go ahead and get the flu shot. Oh, no, shot I did get it right. Well, you are correct. I'm sorry, you Holly. You got it wrong, Holly. I'm just confused. I'm sorry, Holly. <laughs> and the internet know. is always correct, right? Never. Uh, <laughs> so you, so that, wait. That's, that's false. No, yeah, no. So, so we make we make flu vaccine out of eggs, okay? Millions and millions of eggs go into making the flu vaccine each and every year. And people were worried, saying, hey, can some of that those allergens cross from the eggs into the flu vaccine? And we've looked at that multiple, multiple times. And people who have mild, mild allergies, like get a rash if they eat eggs, they have no problem okay. whatsoever. But so if you have okay. a really, really bad Fiction. allergic reaction, okay. we will watch you for 30 minutes. But you can go ahead and get the flu shot. You are fine. All right. I okay. just default to this when I feel bad. <laughs> so Is I'm that fiction? I read it wrong. <laughs> wrong answer. All okay, right, Doc. What's Number next? three. Some flu vaccines contain mercury. Some flu vaccines contain mercury. That is a fact. That is a fact. That we is say Holly says it's a fact. Fiction on Twitter. They say it's fiction. It is a fact that oh. some flu vaccines have mercury in them. Yeah. And some people have been that worried about that. They're saying, what, mercury? Should that be in effect? It's part of what is a preservative. And this pre keeps our vaccine safe. It prevents you from getting bacteria or fungal infections after you get a flu shot. So it's good. Some vaccines don't have mercury. So if you want to, if you're really worried about it, A, don't eat seafood. All right, that all has mercury. Right. right. But two, a lot more mercury than any flu shot. And two, you can talk to your doctor. If you say, I want the single dose mercury-free vaccine, mm. They can say, okay, come on over here, or they will tell you where to get it. But obviously, the mercury that's in the flu shot isn't going to hurt you. No, they've looked it's at this okay. all, all over the time, and Otherwise they did not wouldn't... see any problems with it. Okay. But they are moving it down because of such a, a pushback against mercury that you're seeing less and less uh, of this mercury okay. in most of our vaccines. I think we have one more statement. All right, we I'm got one. Three for three. All right, we just said all it right. is flu vaccine season, and it is not flu season. If you don't get your flu vaccine before the flu season starts, you can't get it later. So you need to get it now, or That's you're fiction. not getting it later. That's fiction. We say it's fiction on Twitter. It is, it is absolutely. You can get your flu vaccine at any time, anywhere. You can get it in the summer if you want. If you're going down to the southern hemisphere where they're having their flu season, you can actually get flu shots in June and July. Always get your flu shot. But that, it is definitely better to get it now before it starts. It takes two to four weeks before you get protection. So now oh, is when you get it. See, yeah. that's where so people get now confused you get it because they so get it. So that you're ready in that November when, when the flu actually hits. Yeah. Or they Dr. The Frank they Esper, sick. a.k.a. Dr. Mythbuster. All right. Wonderful job. This was fun. I'm smarter now because of this. You're smarter yeah, than all of us. Lunch break's coming right back. All right. Look at this. <laughs> Well Last year alone, there were over 130 fatal
leave you on this Wednesday lunch break with this picture. This is so funny. Squirrels stashing their winter food in the hood of this car. Pennsylvania woman driving to work, she says, I smell roasted nuts. What's going on here? She pulls over, it's straight caught on fire. I have so many questions. Over 200. This was fun. Little scrunt. I had a blast. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Thanks for making free news a part of your afternoon. Watch us live wherever you are on our website, on our apps, and on Hulu and Roku. No matter where you are, three news is there.